The next item is the nuclear substance in Canada, a safety performance report for 2012, as outlined in CMDM 52. I understand that Monsieur André Regimbald will make the presentation. Please proceed. Bonsoir, Monsieur le Président, membre de la Commission. Je m'appelle André Régimbal. Je suis le directeur général responsable de la réglementation des substances nucléaires. Nous vous présentons ce soir le rapport sur le rendement en matière de sûreté des utilisateurs de substances nucléaires, d'équipements réglementés et d'installations nucléaires de catégorie 2 au Canada pour l'année 2012. Nous sommes très fiers de vous présenter ce rapport qui constitue le quatrième rapport de sûreté produit jusqu'à maintenant par la CCSN, le précédent rapport vous ayant été présenté en janvier 2013. Production of the Safety Performance Report continues to be an outstanding achievement for the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission as we continue to be the only nuclear, regulatory, nuclear regula regulator in the world to be producing such comprehensive report on the safety performance of nuclear substance and equipment users in industrial, medical, commercial, and research and academic settings. Following the presentation today, our intent is to have this report published on the CNSC external website in March of 2014. <coughs> J'aimerais vous présenter mes collègues qui sont avec moi ce soir pour la présentation du rapport. Tout d'abord, Madame Isabelle Tremblay, agente de programme dans la division des autorisations de transport et du soutien stratégique. Monsieur Sylvain Fay, directeur des autorisations de transport et du soutien stratégique. Ms. Kavita Murthy, Director of Accelerators in Class II Facilities. Mr. Peter Funderek, Director of Nuclear Substance and Radiation Device Licensing. Mr. Henry Ravsky, Director of Operations Inspection Division. Il y a d'autres membres du personnel de la CCSN qui sont présents dans la salle et à Ottawa en appui à l'équipe. Je passe la parole maintenant à Mme Tremblay qui fera la présentation en anglais. Isabelle Tremblay. This presentation will provide you with a brief overview of the changes incorporated in this new edition of the report and a description of the metrics used to measure the safety performance. Then I will go over the results, which are summarized here in this slide. The report covers 2,513 licenses among four nuclear sectors, medical, industrial, academic and research, as well as commercial and it includes results from about 1,500 inspections. We noticed good compliance performance from licensees in 2012, with improvements in the medical and industrial sectors for operating performance, and improvements in the medical as well as the academic and research sectors for radiation <clears throat> protection. For inspections that resulted in ratings of below requirements or unacceptable, the CNSC ensured that all non-compliances were properly addressed and corrected by the licensees. The report also includes information related to occupational doses, which were low and followed constant trends when compared to previous years. In fact, they were well below the regulatory limit of 50 millisieverts per year for a nuclear energy worker. There was a small increase in the number of reported events in 2012, as well as an increase in the number of issued orders, namely in the industrial sector. Overall, licensees offered a good safety performance. Now, regarding the structure of the report, there were a few changes made in this edition. A section has been added to provide an overview of the performance results with sector-to-sector -sector comparisons. The number of those graphs has been <coughs> reduced by focusing on nuclear energy workers. The description of the safety performance measures and the compliance rating system has been moved to an appendix, and a new appendix to provide detailed reporting for the two high energy research particle accelerators covered by this report has been included. This year, there are <coughs> two new subsectors in the commercial sector the servicing of radiation devices and prescribed equipment, as well as the distribution of nuclear substances. This edition also contains information on the safety performance of the CNSC laboratory as a licensee. 
The next slide will summarize the performance measures used for this industry report. The performance measures are the inspection ratings obtained from inspections conducted by the CNSC for operating performance, radiation protection, and sealed source tracking activities. There are two additional performance measures used, occupational doses, which are extracted from annual compliance reports submitted by licensees, and events reported to the CNSC. The report also includes enforcement activities in the form of issued orders and decertification of exposure device operators. These regulatory actions are also published on the CNSC website as they are issued. The next slides will present the information related to occupational doses. This table summarizes the reported events relating to radiation doses. There were three cases where a worker may have been subjected to a dose in excess of regulatory limits. One of them involved a radiation therapy worker not designated as a nuclear energy worker and who may have received 2.17 millisievert, which is in excess of the one millisievert regulatory dose limit for a member of the public. The second one was related to a nuclear energy worker who may have been subjected to 75 millisievert which is in excess of the 50 millisievert regulatory limit for a nuclear energy worker. And the last one was related to a portable gauge user, not designated as a nuclear energy worker, who may have received 1.16 millisievert. In all three cases, licensees act acted in accordance with the requirements of the uh, radiation protection regulations that included informing the workers and conducting an investigation of the situation. In all cases, the licensee concluded that the doses were likely non-personal, which means the dosimeters may have been exposed while not being worn on the person. The CNSC reviewed the information submitted by the licensees and found that all had met their obligations with respect to the requirements of the radiation protection regulations. In all cases, there were no health consequences to the individuals involved. This graph presents the occupational doses received by nuclear energy workers with all four sectors combined. The dose information is extracted from the annual compliance report submitted by licensees. Following a relocation of CNSC resources, we were able to analyze a greater number of compliance reports. As such, the report includes those data pertaining to 10,305 nuclear energy workers in 2012, compared to about 7,000 in 2011. Even with this increase in data coverage, the results are relatively consistent with the previous reporting years. Nuclear energy workers are subject to a regulatory dose limit of 50 millisievert per year, and we can see that they all receive doses significantly less than the limit. 84.5% of them received less than one millisievert, 14% received between one and five millisievert, and 1.5% received between five and 20 millisievert. Now the next slide will present doses to workers who are not designated as nuclear energy workers. <clears throat> These workers are referred to as other workers in the report. This graph combines again all four sectors and similar to the previous graph, it includes those data of a larger number of other workers with 10,300 in 2012 compared to about 8,700 in 2011. Again here, results are consistent with previous reporting years. These workers are subject to a regulatory dose limit of one millisievert per year, which was not exceeded in 2012. The data shows that 98.8% of them received less than 0.5 millisievert, and 1.2% received between 0.5 and one millisievert. Now the next slides will present the performance results for each of the four sectors. I will start with the compliance performance of the medical sector licensees. On this slide, you can see pictures representing this sector. Examples of radioisotopes that are used in the diagnostic of various medical issues. 
a cat um, undergoing a nuclear medicine scan, and a medical linear accelerator used in radiation therapy. Next are the inspection rating results. With respect to operating performance, the medical sector was generally compliant and saw a slight improvement in its compliance level compared to 2011. In fact, 90.7% of the inspected licensees were found to be compliant in 2012, an increase of 4.7 percentage point compared to 2011. Now moving on to inspection ratings for radiation protection. As uh, the figure indicates, compliance ratings for co radiation protection have been steadily improving, improving with the proportion of inspected licensees found to be below requirements or unacceptable down by 16.4 percentage points in 2012 compared to two, 2008. And there was a 1.1 percentage point improvement in compliance compared to 2011. This graph presents the results related to the seal source tracking activities. There are fewer inspections in this area, as only licensees in possession and control of high-risk seal sources are subject to their, to their mandatory tracking requirements. Compliance levels were strong, with 100% compliance over the past three years. This slide presents the number of reported events in the medical sector. There was a slight increase in their number, with 21 <coughs> reported events in 2012 compared to 19 in 2011. These, this increase was distributed amongst various event types. Of the four reported events of missing nuclear substances, all of them involved low-risk or very low-risk sill sources. The next slide will summarize results for the sector. The compliance level of medical sector licensees has continuously improved compared to previous years in both operating performance and radiation protection. There was a slight increase in reported events and no orders were issued to uh, these licensees in 2012. Based on the results presented, CNSC staff concludes that the use of nuclear substances in the medical sector is safe. This ends the presentation for the medical sector. Now moving on to the industrial sector. Here are some pictures of different types of uses of nuclear substances in this area. On the left is an oil well logging site. Center is a fixed gauge used to determine the operational parameters of the flow inside the pipe. And on the right is a CNSC inspector conducting a field inspection of a portable gauge. Next will be the industrial sector results review. This slide presents the operating performance inspection ratings for the industrial sector. Licensees continued to improve their compliance level with an increase of 2.5 percentage points in 2012 compared to 2011. The proportion of inspected licensees that were found to be below requirements or unacceptable was down by 12.5 percentage points in 2012 compared to 2008 an indication of the continuous improvement in compliance for this safety area. The compliance level related to uh, radiation protection gathered from 900 inspections remained constant in 2012 compared to 2011, with 85.7% 85, 85 of inspected licensees found to be compliant. And now with respect to seal source tracking activities, the compliance level has slightly decreased in 2012 compared to 2011, but was still strong with 92.9% .9 of inspected licensees found to be compliant. This slide presents the events reported by licensees in the industrial sector. There was a slight decrease in the number of reported events with 77 of them in 2012 compared to 83 in 2011. Even though the number is relatively high, it is in line with the 1,451 licenses in this sector. The majority of uh, reported events were related to damaged devices, 18 of which were portable gauges hit or run over by vehicles on construction sites. There were no reported leakage of sealed sources following these events. There were eight instances of missing or recovered nu nuclear substances. 
Two of them were reports of found nuclear substances. And of the six that were related to missing nuclear substances, five of them were recovered shortly after being reported missing. There was one that has not been recovered yet, and it involves a portable gauge containing a low-risk seal source. There were 16 orders issued to licensees in the industrial sector, a slight increase compared to 2011. Of the 16 orders, nine were issued to portable gauge licensees, an increase from the six orders issued to them in 2011. This increase is in part the result of a greater number of field inspections conducted by CNSC inspectors. These field inspections are conducted on site where the inspectors can observe workers and identify potential health and safety risks. All of the orders have not been closed after the CNSC has reviewed the corrective measures implemented by the licensees and found them satisfactory. The next slide will provide a summary of the performance results for this sector. We have noticed a continuous improvement in compliance level compared to previous reporting years. There was a slight decrease in reported events compared to 2011 and an increase in the number of issued orders, in particular to portable gauge licensees. All of the orders have since been closed. Based on the results presented, CNSC staff concludes that the use of nuclear substances in the industrial sector is safe. We will now be presenting an overview of the results for the academic and research sector. Here, the nuclear industry not only uses sealed sources, but also open sources as shown in the picture on the left. It also uses radiation devices and accelerators for teaching and research purposes. A high, research, a high energy research particle accelerator is shown here on the right. As the graph indicates, this sector has maintained its inspection ratings for operating performance in the past three years, with 84.5% of inspected licensees found to be compliant in 2012. A similar trend is shown here for the radiation protection inspection ratings. The sector has maintained its compliance level between 78% and 81% in the past three years. There were 40 inspections conducted among the academic and research sector licensees that included a review of sealed source tracking activities, and all of the inspected licensees were found to be compliant in this area. In 2012, there were eight reported events in this sector, three of which were related to missing nuclear substances. One case was a report of a found check source of very low risk used for demonstration purposes. The other two cases were reports of missing nuclear substances. One case involved a radiation device containing a very low risk seal source that has not yet been recovered. The other case involved the CNSC laboratory. These, <clears throat> there were three very low risk check sources left behind in a room after a training session that were recovered shortly after. An internal investigation was conducted as well as an inspection to verify the compliance of the CNSC laboratory with the regulations and the license. The CNSC staff found that all of the corrective actions had been adequately implemented. The next slide will summarize the results for the academic and research sector. The compliance level of these licensees was maintained or slightly improved compared to previous years. There was a slight increase in the number of reported events and no orders were issued in 2012. Based on the results presented, CNSC staff concludes that the use of nuclear substances in the academic and research sector is safe. Now moving on to the commercial sector, the last one. On the left-hand side is a picture of a cyclotron, a common type of isotope production accelerator used to produce isotopes for diagnostic medical imaging. On the right-hand side is a medical uh, linear accelerator being serviced. In the commercial sector, there was a decrease in the level of compliance related to operating performance, with 84.9% of inspected licensees found to be compliant in 2012, compared to 92.7% in 2011. 
This decrease is mainly due to a greater number of field inspections conducted by the CNSC inspectors in the servicing subsector. These field inspections were made possible by requesting licensees to notify the CNSC of their servicing activities ahead of time, therefore allowing the inspectors to be present while the work was being performed, and as a consequence, more operating performance non-compliances were noted. Now, with respect to radiation protection inspection ratings, the commercial sector has maintained a constant trend over the past three years, with about 91% of inspected licensees found to be compliant. The ratings for sealed source tracking activities were strong, with all licensees found to be compliant in 2012. There was an increase in the number of reported events in the commercial sector, mostly related to an increase in reported events in the processing of nuclear substances used for medical purposes, as well as an increase in the packaging and transport-related events. Half of these events were involved packages not fully compliant with the regulations. Three of them were administrative in nature, while the other four involved contamination inside the packages. In all cases, licensees implemented adequate response measures to mitigate the impacts of the events, which were all reviewed by CNSC staff. In addition, none of the packaging and transport-related events resulted in the release of nuclear substances contained inside the packages. Licensees followed proper procedures to handle the packages and implemented corrective actions to prevent reoccurrence. There was one order issued to a licensee in the commercial sector in 2012, and the order was closed once CNSC staff was satisfied with the corrective actions implemented by the licensee. The commercial sector summary slide is presented next. In 2012, there was a slight decrease in the compliance level for operating performance, while it remained constant for radiation protection. There was an increase in the number of reported events, and one order was issued to a licensee and was closed. Based on the results presented, CNSC staff concludes that the use of nuclear substances in the commercial sector is safe. To conclude with the overview of the safety performance results included in this report, there were po positive gains in compliance levels in 2012, with the exception of a slight decrease in the operating performance for the commercial sector. Doses to workers were, were well within regulatory limits, essentially at the same level as those reported for 2011. There were three cases where workers may have exceeded the, those regulatory limits, but all three were deemed to be likely non-personal. As for the reported events, none of them resulted in doses in excess of regulatory limits. In addition, there were no releases of dispersible nuclear substances that had an adverse radiological impact on the environment, and licensees implemented appropriate response measures. There was an increase in the number of issued orders in 2012, more specifically in the industrial sector, and there were no orders issued to the medical as well as the academic and research sectors. The CNSC continues to take proactive measures to reach out to licensees with the biannual publication of the DNSR newsletter, the Industrial Radiography Working Group, as well as other various outreach activities. Based on the information provided in this report, CNSC staff conclude that the use of nuclear substances in Canada is safe and that the health, safety, and security of Canadians, as well as the environment, are protected. The Directorate of Nuclear Substance Regulation intends to publish this report in both official languages. It will then be posted on the CNSC's internal and external websites. I would like to mention that there were three minor mistakes in the CMD. Um, the first one is on page 22, where it should read that there was an increase of, huh? oh, page 22, sorry. Yeah, there was an increase of 4.7 percentage points instead of 4.2. That's in the increase in the compliance level. The second one is on page 27. 
This is the uh, this is the fourth line, where it says an increase of 4.2 percentage points on page 22, first paragraph, fourth line, in the middle, 4.7, should we? Mm. And uh, the second one is on page 27. <clears throat> it should read that someone would have, a, would have had to be in proximity of the source for 200 hours. Uh, the text reads uh, 30 hours, but it should... Um, this is um, the, the, first, the first paragraph under missing or found nuclear substances. The, the, the first line, but the paragraph in the last sentence where it says for more than 30 consecutive hours, it should read for more than 200 consecutive <coughs> hours and not 30. And that did not happen, but it would have had to be 200 to reach the public limit. And the last one is on page 29. And it's the figure caption for figure 21. It reads, uh, right now, oil well logging site. Um, it should read, typical industrial radiography setup. Some coding issue. So that's it. This uh, concludes my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. And we're ready for. André Reginval here. The, the opportunity that we have to present uh, the report uh, tonight gives us also a chance to, as you have just uh, witnessed, to correct some information that were noted in, in other readings and also to receive your feedback and comments uh, in uh, making other changes as needed so that uh, we would uh, be ready to publish uh, in March 2014. Thank you.